This is Partners in Practice, a weekly series dedicated to the evolving field of the advanced practice clinician. Here is your host nurse practitioner, Mimi Secor. It's very stressful working as an advanced practice clinician, be it a nurse practitioner, physician's assistant, midwife, or physician. And more clinicians are realizing the need to walk their talk in terms of trying to live a healthier lifestyle themselves and are increasingly turning to life coaches for help. Welcome, I'm nurse practitioner Mimi Secor, your host, and with me today is brain-based life coach Pratt Bennett from Boston, Massachusetts, and we're discussing clinician stress and how brain-based coaching can help clinicians live a healthier, happier, and more fulfilled lives. Hello, Pratt. Welcome to Reach MD. Hi, thanks, and hello to everybody out there. You all deserve a lot less stress than you're currently going through. Exactly. I understand you offer brain-based or cognitive coaching. What exactly is that, and how is it different from other types of coaching, Pratt? Well, all coaching focuses on a future-focused, solutions-directed process. And I can't speak so much for the other schools of coaching because they are so varied. But what I can say is that the reason I gravitated towards brain-based coaching is because I'm a very evidence-based guy. I need results. I need to know that what I'm doing has been based on results. And I need to know that it's going to get results. And brain-based coaching is about identifying the thought patterns that have been getting people stuck identifying where they've been getting stuck, and triggering the thought processes that will lead to insights, new solutions, new plans, and new actions. So it's basically retraining the brain to work better, simply put. Very well put. What does this kind of coaching, what does it look like in actual practice when you're working with a clinician? Okay. So I can compare it to the stages in the medical process. So there's always an initial evaluation. And the initial evaluation is really of all the stressors in somebody's life. The question is, what are the biggest ones that people want to identify and get rid of? And it absolutely is possible to get rid of them. And then once you've done that, reducing stress isn't really motivational enough for the brain or usually a person. It's kind of a double negative. So really what's important is to reconceive of the whole situation. This is from the work of uh, UCLA neuroscientist Matthew Lieberman. To look at what is it that's really compelling that you could achieve if you had less stress? Or what's a reason to take the steps away from stress that are worth making that effort? And as soon as I can get an NP focused on something that she really wants or he really wants... Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to work for them because now I'm engaging their prefrontal cortex. And as soon as I engage their prefrontal cortex, I'm really dialing down the limbic system. Hmm. So the simple act of talking about which stressor you want to remove, of quantifying the stressor, of labeling the stressor, those are all PFC actions that are really good at reducing limbic system response. So talking about the stress in a symbolic way mm -hmm. really reduces it as a first step. And what's that PFC that you refer Sorry, to? Sorry, prefrontal cortex. Oh, and that's, okay, that's cool. our executive brain, and that's NPs are Olympiads of the PFC. They are absolutely stunning. I I'm amazed at what NPs can do given their stress level, given the amount of burdens and demands on their time. I'm amazed at how functional they are in that capacity, and my desire is to show them how much more functional they can be in and out of work with a lower stress level. I also noticed on your website you ask clients to fill out a self-evaluation questionnaire before you'll work with them. Is that part of your whole brain-based approach? Absolutely. The thing is that coaching is work. It requires re literally retraining the brain, redirecting thoughts, and NPs, like all of us, get into ruts. And the only way to get out of a rut is to be very powerfully motivated to make some changes. And if you don't have that motivation, you're just going to fall back into the rut again and again and again. And in my early days of coaching, I used to work with people who were really ambivalent and ambiguous about things. Never again. I don't want to waste their time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste their money. I don't want to have them be disappointed. I guarantee a, a very high level of results for my mm -hmm. clients, and I do that by having them self-assess. Mm -hmm. So nobody should be doing coaching who's not really excited about changing. If you're just joining us, I'm nurse practitioner Mimi Secor, your host, and with me today is brain-based coach Pratt Bennett from Boston, Massachusetts, and we're discussing clinician stress and how brain-based coaching can help clinicians live a healthier, happier, and more fulfilled life. What do you think are the biggest problems that nurse practitioners are facing? Hmm. Okay, so NPs are as varied a group as any other, fascinating group of individuals, but I would say there is one dominant thing that stands out. 
And it's a lack of self-advocacy. The NPs that I talk to are you know, remarkable in their jobs, and they have an encyclopedic knowledge, and they're incredibly good at taking care of others. But they're so externally focused that they do have this real tendency to take the focus away from themselves and, as a result, get themselves into a lot of unhealthy behaviors that they cognitively know are wrong. But they just don't have the time or the attention or the inclination or the willpower, whatever it might be. They don't have the time to turn it around. And that's usually when they come to me. And they come to me full of desire for change. They just don't know how. And it is incredibly rewarding to help these people who are experts at helping others and who I think are the key to the next wave of the medical world in the United States. They're, the NPs, bar none, are the solution to so many of our problems since the number of MDs who go into primary care is going down, exactly. but the demand for primary care is going up. NPs are filling that gap. Huge fan. So anyway, the number one problem for NPs is not taking care of themselves. And my job isn't to take care of them. My job is to help them figure out, each person, what the individual way to take care of themselves is. So they can do for themselves what they are so good at doing for the rest of the world, just Absolutely. as you are. And I have to say, just they think they have to choose. They don't have to choose between their patients and their family members and themselves. Well, that's what we all think. So thank you, Pratt, for telling us that we have another option. It's true. So how can brain-based coaching help nurse practitioners with their problems? Okay, so I could go on and tell you about all these technical things. I could yes. tell you about Matthew Lieber and UCLA yes. and all these people. But I think your NPs already have enough data. They already have enough research. But even more importantly, they should know that there's some really simple things that they can do on an everyday basis that can dramatically reduce stress and increase happiness. First of all, Chew your food. Chew that food. Enjoy that food. Be present in that moment. Pay attention to uh, the contact of that food with your teeth and to its transformation into something that's going to give you energy for the rest of the day. Breathe. Slow down. Take that nice, slow, deep breath that your brain needs. Oxygen is its main food, oxygen and glucose. Take good care of yourself that way. Occasionally, walk instead of drive. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. It doesn't have to be anything major. These are things that allow NPs to shift, to change channels between patients. Even something as simple as put the paperwork down. Put your hands on your knees. Just close your eyes and take a breath. Because, of course, they could go to that next client session. Of course. Right. Right. Just you know, go right from one they, patient to the next patient. But they could also take 5, 10, 15 seconds and literally just be present for themselves in a way that they're so good at being present with their patients. What kind of changes and goals are important for your nurse practitioner clients? What are they really looking to do? Well, one of the reasons I love working with nurse practitioners is I love their goals. I love their goals. NPs, what do they want to do? They want to spend more time with their families. They want to have some downtime for themselves. They want to do yoga. They want to meditate. They want to exercise. What about the Mercedes? What about the big yeah, house? Yeah, they're, they're, they're not they such a Mercedes and Diamond Watch group of people. That's one, another reason that I have so much affinity with that group. This is a really grounded, down-to-earth group of people, and they're very real, and they want to be real in their lives, and they know what they want. They're just not quite sure how to get there. And it's a delight to work with people like that because they are so clear. And these goals, the research that I know shows that there is such a bigger psychological reward in investing, either financially or in time, investing in experiences, investing in relatedness of other people, investing in exercise, and I don't mean going to the gym, anything that you are doing with your body. John Medina, great study of college students, 20 minutes of walking three times a week led to a 30% increase in mass scores. Wow. Uh, as soon as they stopped the exercise, the mass scores went down. But imagine, imagine what NPs already at their high functioning level could do with just a little bit of walking, for example. Wow. That's very powerful. Mm. What kind of results do your clients get through coaching and working with you, Pratt? I think the biggest result, the result that's most meaningful to them, therefore the most meaningful to me, is an increased sense of autonomy. Now, coincidentally, NPs across the country are seeking increased autonomy legislatively, and I don't think that's an accident. An increase in autonomy, even if it's just a perceived increase in autonomy, is one of the best stress reducers there is. So let me give you an example. If an NP is driving to work and she's really driven crazy by the traffic, 
okay? Simply thinking that she said, well, I chose to drive instead of taking public transportation. I chose to be on my schedule instead of that schedule. That simple brain shift actually dials down an enormous amount of stress. This is why CEOs wow. who work much longer hours than company employees, CEOs have a much higher tolerance for handling stress because they have much more autonomy in how they spend their time. And NPs actually have a lot of autonomy in how they run their day. Mm -hmm. And the more they recognize it, even the way they talk to their clients, their patients, right. how much time they choose to spend with them, right. uh, what courses of treatment they recommend. Those are all really powerful choices. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, NPs were all RNs. And exactly. that's a huge increase in autonomy right exactly. there. Exactly. That whole body of knowledge and skill and experience base. And what about NPs and clinicians that are just feeling like the world is running them? Mm. They don't feel like they have that autonomy. They mm. feel like it's phone call, lab work, patients, oh, patients, yeah. thinking mm. about them, you know, this continuous treadmill. You know, what can those individuals that are just right on the edge of mm. the cliff do for themselves? Wow, it's like you've spoken about everybody that I work with. So part of the problem or solution is that we're much more driven by intrinsic motivators than extrinsic motivators. So anything that we feel we have to do immediately kind of triggers a threat response in us, increases cortisol again, increases all sorts of limbic emotional reactions, makes us resentful or guilty or nervous. It just cuts through our quality of life. So the first thing that anybody can do is simply focus on what you do already have control over. And there are so many things. You can sit down and make a, a list on a piece of paper. You know, I chose what I ate for breakfast. I chose what I wore to work. I chose how I interacted with that patient. I chose who I spent time with in my time off. I chose not to see people and spend time with myself. I chose to read that book. That heightened awareness is actually the best tool that any NP can have in sort of reassessing how much autonomy they actually have. And it's a fantastic way. It costs nothing. Yeah, really. A fantastic way to dial down stress. And I'm thinking most people that are totally stressed out just don't even see that simple solution because they're so stressed out. That's right. And it, the solution would be different for every person, and that's right. actually the beauty, right. is finding your own list of autonomy opportunities okay. is the most meaningful. Is there any research supporting the effectiveness of the brain-based coaching that you do? It's funny. It's actually, it goes both ways. First of all, everything that I do is based on research. All the techniques that I use, I initially started out as, as very much of an intuitive coach. And like David Rock, who founded the results coaching systems that I studied under, I wanted to know why this stuff worked. It worked. I didn't know why. So then I started schooling up with all the neuroscientists and the experts in positive psychology and affective psychology. Where were the results happening? And that's why I went in to get a lot of research training in uh, the neuroscience of coaching. And now there's great research not only that informs the neuroscience of coaching, but there's now great evaluative research hmm. in how effective neuroscientific coaching is in organizations in particular. Tell our listeners about the new program you're developing, I hear, for nurse mm -hmm. practitioners. The first thing I'd say is this is a program designed with NPs from across the country and designed exclusively for NPs. There is no program like it. And there's an amazing team of experts. You can just check it out on the web at fivewisepaths.com. The five paths are basically the most effective, evidence-based, research-heavy techniques that I've found in 20 years of coaching to help people not only reduce stress, but increase autonomy, increase satisfaction, and create much more balanced, fulfilling lives. So it's about helping NPs get real and creating lives that are defined by their dreams and not by their limitations. How long is the program? Is um, the program involved? is eight weeks. Okay. The reason it's eight weeks is because all the research that I know of says it takes between 45 to 60 days to take a new idea and turn it into an unconscious automatic routine. So I want to make sure mm. that all the NPs on my program have the time and support to not only create new routines, but actually get so good at them that they don't need to think about them anymore. Their mm. own personal best practices. Thank you very much, Pratt Bennett, for joining us today and to talk about brain-based coaching. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being on the show. And to all the NPs out there and all the clinicians, I would like to say, you guys do such incredible work. You deserve so much thanks and appreciation. Please treat yourself to some deep breathing today. Exactly. I'm nurse practitioner Mimi Secor, your host, and thank you for listening. You've been listening to Partners in Practice on ReachMD. You can download this program and any other program in our library at ReachMD.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for listening.